So, I've been invited to create a video for Jack Month, so today, I wanted to talk about Jack and Daxter's identity as a franchise. Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and back with a brand new video. I've made a couple of videos about Jack and Daxter in the past, and in almost all of them, I mentioned the specific issue with the franchise, so I decided to actually make a dedicated video about it to flesh out my thoughts. Jack and Daxter was essentially Naughty Dog's second franchise that they made for Sony Computer Entertainment. During its peak performance, there were three franchises that were known to the PlayStation brand during the PlayStation 2 era. Ratchet and Clank, arguably the most successful of the trio, Sly Cooper, the more niche of the three, and Jack and Daxter, who floated somewhere in between. Now, Ratchet and Clank has held strong through every console generation, from the PlayStation 2 to the recent PlayStation 5 release. The game has had a clear objective mission since the very first game. Blow things apart with big weapons and have a comedic story, often slipping in subtle jabs at other games and popular franchises. Out of all three, they are objectively the most successful. Sly Cooper appealed to a more niche audience, but also had a clear and objective mission. Stealth open world platforming in a colorful and imaginative world. Being a coy and handsome thief of the night appealed to fans far and wide. Jack and Daxter as a series is... Well, this is where we encounter the issue. Jack and Daxter, or the Jack series, is a bit unclear when it comes to what it wants to be. The first game, the most successful of the trilogy, is 100% just a 3D Crash Bandicoot. Jack and Daxter is essentially everything that Twin Sanity wanted to be. Sprawling open worlds, colorful characters, fun dialogue, and of course, simple yet sharp controls. Every enemy in the overworld typically was destroyed in one or maybe two hits, just like in Crash Bandicoot. But there is also an aspect of Banjo-Kazooie, where you find these power cells littered throughout the world as collectibles. This is 100% one of the games that you had to get if you bought an early PlayStation 2. The first game is clearly a fun, open world, colorful 3D collectathon platformer. Then we hit Jack 2. This is where things go for a turn. First, the game is no longer called Jack and Daxter, but it's just Jack, and Jack 2 sends Jack to the future. Actually, technically, according to the story, it's back to the present, but that's neither here nor there, where he transforms from the silent hero to a rough, angsty, angry teenager that was just allowed to say his very first swear. My name is Cor. May I help? You look like a reasonably smart man. I want information. Where the hell am I? He's been juiced up with Dark Eco and now has an angry temper. He can turn into Dark Jack, which basically gives him super angy powers. Oh yeah, they also decide to give him a gun. And not just one gun, but four of them. Remnants of the first game is still here when it comes to platforming, but the collectathon aspects have greatly been reduced. The environments also change from colorful, lush jungles to a grim, dark, futuristic city. Jack 2 really muddies the water on what Jack and Daxter is. We go from a happy, spunky platformer to a darker and edgier mishmash of what was popular at the time of its creation. While the first game initially felt like Crash Bandicoot, and there's nothing wrong with that, this this kind of feels like a mishmash of Ratchet and Clank, Grand Theft Auto, and Crash Bandicoot. Jack 3 then comes out, and clearly Naughty Dog realized that Jack 2 was probably too edgy, so they pulled back a bit and introduced a bit more of a classic comedic script. In this game, they introduce Light Eco, which is meant to balance the darkness that's within Jack. So, if we look at the timeline here, we go from lush jungles to a grim dark city to ancient civilization deserts. They also introduce essentially weaponized doom buggy racing. The first three quarters of the game is pretty okay, but the last quarter really falls flat. So now the game is like Ratchet and Clank, Mad Max, Grand Theft Auto, Tomb Raider, and only sprinklings of Crash Bandicoot. So Jack and Daxter is, as a franchise, a 3D platforming open world third person shooter with an open world racing concept. 
Do you see the issue here? Jack and Daxter as a series has a serious identity problem. The mood and gameplay shift is so drastic from the first game that if you replace the first game with new main characters, you wouldn't even be able to recognize it from the following releases. So. Jack, as a series, has an issue among all three of its mainline games. What is the point of this video, you might be asking? Well, Ratchet & Clank is still thriving, coming out with AAA titles every couple of years, and there are new weekly reports that Sly Cooper is likely coming back, but it has been made clear by Naughty Dog themselves that they are not working on a new Jack & Daxter and will likely not ever work on one in the near future. Some have argued and wondered why Sly Cooper, the franchise that has sold less than Jack and Daxter, is likely having a comeback, but not Jack. I think the answer lies within the confusion within the franchise. To continue where the franchise left off would be a big muddled mess for everyone. And I think that is something that is pushing other developers away and making them not want to touch the franchise. However, there is something that I think could easily happen to completely unify the franchise. I think a reboot with a clear vision from the beginning could easily fix the trilogy. It doesn't have to be a drastic reboot. It can still follow the same concept of the three games, but starting from the very first Jack and Daxter and making sure that the following sequels are planned and set up correctly thematically with a clear vision. It would allow the franchise to succeed and I think it would do extremely well. This would also allow the new developers to come up with new ideas that would complement the series and not feel like a stitched mixed bag of what was popular at the time and Naughty Dog chasing what was trending. All in all, I think the entire franchise needs a refresher and it's what's keeping it back from having a full comeback. But what do you think? Should Jack and Daxter come back as a reboot? Comment below and let me know. Thank you so much to all those who not only support the channel, but myself and my family. Because of your contributions, I'm able to do this full time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button or becoming a Patreon with the link in the description. I also live stream every Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and say hi. Again, thank you to everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream.